بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹ آئی ہوپ آل آف یو آر فائن اینڈ ڈوئنگ ویل آج کا لیکچر اسٹارٹ کرتے ہیں اچھی بات سے سب سے پہلے آپ لوگوں کے ساتھ قرآن پاک کی ایک آئے شیئر کرنا چاہوں گی لگت خلق نل انسان آفی احسن تقویم ترجمہ بے شک ہم نے آدمی کو اچھی صورت پر بنایا سو ڈی اسٹوڈینٹس کبھی بھی کسی کا مذاق نہیں اڑانا چاہیے کیونکہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے ہر شخص کو بہت اچھی صورت میں جو ہے وہ پیدا کیا ہے سو so, اللہ تعالیٰ کی بنائی گئی کسی بھی مخلوق کا ہمیں مذاق نہیں اڑانا چاہیے اس کا بہت گنا ملتا ہے آج کے لیے جو حدیث آپ لوگوں کے ساتھ شیئر کرنا چاہتی ہوں وہ کچھ اس طرح سے ہے حضور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ارشاد فرمایا جس گھر کے دروازے رشتہ داروں کے لیے بند اور جس گھر میں رات دیر تک جاگنے اور صبح دیر سے اٹھنے کا رواج ہو جائے تو وہاں رزق کی تنگی اور بے برکتی کو کوئی نہیں روک سکتا ڈی اسٹوڈینٹس ہمیں کوشش کرنی چاہیے کہ ہم رات کو جلدی سو جائیں اور صبح جلدی اٹھیں فجر کی نماز کے وقت اٹھ جائیں تاکہ ہم اپنی دنیا اور آخرت کو سنوار سکیں اس کے علاوہ ہمیں اپنے رشتہ داروں کے لیے اپنے گھر کے دروازے ہمیشہ کھلے رکھنے چاہیے ہمیشہ ہمیں ان کو ویلکم کرنا ہے اور اچھی طریقے سے ویلکم کرنا ہے تاکہ کبھی بھی کوئی بھی ہم سے ناراض نہ ہو سو so, ایسا کر کے ہم اپنی دنیا اور آخرت کو جو ہے وہ سنوار سکتے ہیں اور یہی جو چھوٹی چھوٹی باتیں ہیں یہ ہمیں زندگی کو بہتر طریقے سے گزارنا سکھاتی ہیں تو so, قرآن اور حدیث کی مدد سے ہم اپنی دنیا اور آخرت دونوں کو بہترین بنا سکتے ہیں ڈی اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے از دا لیکچر نمبر نائن آف یونٹ ٹو دیٹ از vectors and equilibrium and in the today's lecture we are going to solve the numerical questions of this unit yes students before going to start the numerical questions let us discuss the formulas which we have learned in this unit first of all In this unit, we have learned about the vector quantities and the vector quantities are the such quantities which have the magnitude and the particular direction. So a magnitude along with the unit vector give rise to the vector quantity. And then we have studied about the splitting of the vector into its rectangular component as The magnitude of AX will be equal to A cos of theta, the X component of the vector A, while the Y component of the vector A will be equal to A sine of theta. It is the splitting of the vector A into its rectangular components as AX and AY. Then we have studied how to find out the resultant of the vectors from its rectangular components if we want to add the vectors. So to find out the vector addition, the resultant vector R will be equal to vector A plus vector B. And for this, we have to first of all find out the X components. which will be Rx and Rx will be equal to the magnitude of Ax plus the magnitude of Bx while Ry will be equal to magnitude of Ay plus magnitude of By. So the resultant vectors magnitude will be equal to the square root of Rx square plus Ry square. So this is the method of the vector addition by the rectangular component method. And also we can add the vectors by the head to tail group. Then we have studied about the dot and the cross products in which we multiply 
more than two or two vectors together. So there are two types of the vector multiplication, either the dot product by which we get a scalar quantity. So A dot B is equal to AB cos of theta. And since it is a scalar quantity, so it does not have any direction. And the second type is the vector product, the cross product in which the two vectors when multiplied, we get the result as a vector quantity. So it has a magnitude along with its direction. Then we have studied about the term torque. The torque is the cross product of the position vector into the force. So the torque will be equal to RF sine of theta into the unit vector. Dear students, these are some of the formulas which we have learned in this unit and we will use these formulas while solving the numerical questions. Question number one is, a person throws a ball straight up with a speed of 12 meters per second. If the bus is moving at 25 meters per second, what is the velocity of the ball to an observer on the ground? Dear students, first of all, we have this question mein given quantities ke jo vectors hai, unko ek rough sketch ke according to what we draw. Karenge. Jo ball hai, Uski direction straight upward hai or uski jo speed hai that is 12 meters per second. So the ball is going in the upward direction with the velocity of 12 meters per second. While the bus is moving at the speed of 25 meters per second, it could be either moved towards the right or towards the left. So let us consider the bus is moving towards the right direction. So if the bus is moving towards the right side in the horizontal direction, so the velocity of the bus is equal to 25 meters per second. So these are the two vectors by which we have to find out the velocity of the ball with respect to the observer which is present on the ground. While the person who threw the ball, he is present on the moving bus. So we have to add these two vectors by the head to tail rule. So by adding these two vectors by head to tail rule, the velocity of the bus, the second vector tail will be placed on the head of the first vector. So the velocity of the bus, and then we can find out the resultant vector by joining the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. So this will be the resultant velocity of the ball to an observer on the ground. And its direction will, will also be measured with respect to the positive x axis. So by using the Pythagoras theorem, the resultant VR will be equal to the square root of V bus square plus VB square, the velocity of the ball. So the velocity of the bus is 25 meters per second square plus the velocity of the ball is 12 meters per second square. So if you take the square of these two quantities and the square root, then your answer will be equal to 27.7 meters per second or approximately you can write down this answer as 28 meters per second. And to find out the direction of the resultant velocity, we use the tangent ratio. Theta is equal to tangent inverse perpendicular over base. So the perpendicular side is velocity of the ball, while the base is the velocity of the bus. So by substituting the values in this formula, we can, be find, we can find out the direction of the resultant velocity of the ball with respect to an observer on the ground. So the velocity of the ball is 12 while the velocity of the bus is 25. So dividing 12 by 25 and then taking the tangent inverse of this value, we can find out the angle theta approximately equal to 26 degrees. So the magnitude of the resultant velocity is equal to 28 meters per second, while its direction with respect to the positive x-axis is 26 degrees. 
So this is the velocity of the ball to an observer on the ground and this will be its direction. Question number two is, a football leaves the foot of a puncher at an angle of 54 degree positive x direction at a speed of 21 meters per second. Determine the horizontal and vertical component, components of the velocity. In this question, the vector's magnitude and its direction is given and we have to find out its horizontal and vertical component. So the football leaves the puncher at an angle of 45 degree with respect, sorry, it's 54 degree with respect to the positive x axis and the speed is 21 meters per second. So we have to find out its x and y component. So the velocity magnitude is 21 meters per second while the direction is 54 degree with respect to the x axis. So to find out the x component, it will be equal to v cos of theta, while the y component, vy, will be equal to v sine of theta. And if you substitute the values, v is 21 cos of 54 degree, while vy is 21 sine of 54 degree. So the 21 cos of 54 is equal to 12 meters per second, and 12 meters per second will be the x component of the velocity, while the y component will be 21 sine of 54, and it is equal to 17 meters per second. So this is how we can find out the horizontal and the vertical components of the velocity if the velocity, magnitude, and the direction is given. So the x component will come out to be 12 meters per second, while the y component is equal to 17 meters per second. Question number three is, a 1.84 kilogram school bag hangs in the middle of a clothesline, causing it to sag by an angle of 3.50 degree. Find the tension P in the clothesline. Now, dear students, in this question, the clothesline is making an angle of 3.50 degree with the x axis. So this angle is 3.50 degree on the both side. And this angle is due to the presence of the bag whose mass is equal to 1.84 kilogram. So the weight of this bag will act in the downward direction and we can find out weight of an object by using the equation W is equal to mg. The weight is actually due to the gravitational pull. So the mass of the object into the gravity while the mass is 1.84 kilogram and gravity is 9.8 meters per second square. You can also use 10 meters per second, but more accurate result will get by using the gravity as 9.8 meters per second squared. So 1.8 into 9.8 is equal to 18 Newton. So the 18 Newton is the answer for the weight of the bag, and it will be directed into the downward direction. And the tension in the string will be produced along the both sides in the upward direction while it will also make the angle of 3.50 with the x axis. So now dear students, the very first step is to resolve this tension into its rectangular component. So Tx and Ty component and similarly on the other side it will be also equal to Tx and T y components. Now if you look at the diagram, the sum of all the forces along the x-axis must be equal to zero and along the x-axis there are the two components of the tension. Both are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So Tx minus Tx will be equal to zero. So hence the first condition of the equilibrium is satisfied. Now by using 
the second part of this condition according to which the sum of all the forces acting along the y axis must be equal to 0 so there are three forces that act along the y axis and these are ty plus py and minus weight of the back since the weight is acting in the downward direction so we will consider it with the negative sign while the tension in the strings on the both sides will be in the upper direction so we take the ty component of the tension with the positive sign so ty plus ty minus w is equal to zero so from this we get 2ty is equal to w or the ty component will be equals to w by 2 but we want to find out the tension t in the string instead of its y component so the ty component will be equal to t sine of theta and in this case the angle theta is 3.50 so from this we get t sine of 3.50 degree equals to 18 divided by 2 or t is equal to 9 sign divided by sine of 3.50 degree and from this the tension in the string will be equal to 148 newton so the tension produced in the string will be equal to 148 Newton. So this is the answer of this question. Question number four is find the magnitude and direction of the vectors represented by the following pair of components. The pair of the components is given if ax and ay components are given and we have to find out the magnitude of the vector a and its direction. So first of all, we will solve the part A. AX is equal to minus 2.3 centimeter, while AY is equal to 4.1 centimeter. And these are the magnitudes of these components. To find out the magnitude of the vector A, we take the square of the AX plus AY and then the square root of the sum. So by substituting the values of the x and the y components in this equation, we get minus 2.3 square plus 4.1 square and the square root. And the magnitude of this resultant vector A will come out to be 4.7 centimeter. And to find out the direction, we use the tangent ratio. Theta is equal to tangent inverse Ay divided by Ax while ay is 4.1 and ax is minus 2.3 so now in this case this vector result resultant vector is present in the second quadrant because its x component is negative and y component is positive so this angle theta will come out to be 4.1 divided by minus 2.3 and tangent inverse and it equals to minus 60.7 degree. Or you can just take this angle as 60.7 degree. But this is not the final answer since this vector lie in the second quadrant. So we have to subtract this angle from 180 degree to get the final answer to get the angle from the positive x-axis so 180 degree minus 60.7 is equal to equal to 119 degree or you can also take 0.3 degree so this is the answer of this question.
the vector's magnitude is 4.7 centimeter and its direction is 119.3 since it lies in the second quadrant so we have to subtract the angle from 180 degree now to solve the second part of this question x and y components are given now in this case x component is positive which is 3.9 meter and the y component is minus 1.8 meter so now this vector will lie in the third quadrant sorry not in the third but in the fourth quadrant because x component is positive while the y component is negative so first of all we will find out the magnitude of the vector a by using this similar formula a x square plus a y square and the square root while a x is 3.9 meter square and a y is minus 1.8 meter square so the resultant vectors magnitude will be equal to 4.3 meter and to find out the angle again we will use the tangent ratio which will be equal to a y divided by a x and a y is equal to minus 1.8 while AX is 3.9. So 1.8 divided by 3.9 and then taking the tangent inverse of the answer, we get theta as 24.7 degree. And since this resultant vector lies in the fourth quadrant, so we will subtract this angle from 300 and 60 degree to measure this angle from the positive x-axis in the anti-clockwise direction. So 360 degree minus 24.7 will equal to 335.2 degree. So for this case, the resultant vector's magnitude is 4.3 meter while its direction is 335.2 degree. Question number five is vector f having magnitude of 5.5 newton makes 10 degree with x axis and vector r with magnitude of 4.3 meter makes 80 degree with x axis. Find the magnitude of the dot and cross products. The two vectors with the magnitude and the directions are given. Vector F is 5.5 Newton while angle is 10 degree and the vector R magnitude is 4.3 meter and its direction is 80 degree from the X axis. So first of all, let us draw the arbitrary X axis. And from this, we will draw the vector F while making an angle of 10 degree and the vector r is equal to 4.3 meter while its angle is 80 degree so to find out the dot or the cross product the very first step is to measure the angle between these two vectors so the angle theta will be equal to 80 degree minus 10 degree which comes out to be 70 degree so first of all we will find out the dot product of these two vectors and to find out the magnitude of these two vectors either you multiply r dot f or f dot r the magnitude will remain the same so r dot f or f dot r will be equal to r f cos of theta so in this case r is 4.3 meter f is 5.5 newton while angle is cos of 70 degree so the answer of the magnitude of the dot product will come out to be 8.1 newton meter and to find out the cross product of these two vectors again either you multiply r cross f or f cross r the magnitude will remain the same just the direction of the resultant vector changes so to find out the magnitude we take r f sine of theta r is 4.3 meter f is 5.5 newton and the angle is 70 degrees so sine of 70 degree and as a result r cross f magnitude will come out to be 22.2 .2 newton meter 
So the magnitude of the dot product is equal to 8.1 Newton meter, while the magnitude of the cross product is equal to 22.2 Newton meter. Question number six is the magnitude of dot and cross product of two vectors are six square root three and six respectively. Find the angle between the vectors. Now dear students, in this question, the magnitudes of the dot and the cross products are given and we have to find out the angle between the given two vectors. So let us consider the one vector as A and the other vector as B. So the magnitude of the dot product of these two vectors A dot B is equal to AB cos of theta which equals to 6 square root 3. So this is equation number 1 while the magnitude of the vectors a cross b is equal to a b sine of theta and it is equal to 6 and now we have to find out the angle theta so the simplest way to find out the angle theta is to divide these two equations if we divide these two equations a b sine theta which is equal to 6 by a b cos of theta which is equal to 6 square root 3. So by doing this, the term AB will get cancelled and also the term 6 will get cancelled. So if we divide these two equations, whatever the magnitude of the vector A and B will be, it will not have any effect on the result. And the sine by cos ratio is equal to 10 theta. So 10 theta is equal to 1 by square root 3 and from this, the angle theta will be equal to tangent inverse 1 over square root 3 and from this theta will be equals to 30 degree. So if the magnitude of the dot and the cross product between the two vectors are 6 square root 3 and 6, then the angle between the vectors will be equal to 30 degree. Question number seven is a uniform rod of one meter length with which six Newton can be supported in a horizontal position on a sharp edge with weight of 10 Newton and 15 Newton suspended from its end. What is the position of point of balance? Now, again, in this question, we will draw the rough sketch of the given terms. There is a rod of one meter in length so the length of this rod is one meter and at its end the weight of 10 newton and 15 newton is hanging from each side and also the weight of the rod itself is six newton which acts in the downward direction at the center of gravity point. So for the uniform rod, the center of gravity point will be exactly the half of its length, which will be at the distance of 0 0.5 meter from each side. Now, in this question, we have to find out the position of the sharp edge, which has to be balanced, used to balance this uniform rod. So we take the arbitrary direction position of the sharp edge. So let us consider the sharp edge position at this side. While its distance from one of the end will be x. So now we have to find out this distance x. Now for this. First of all, we have to find out the direction and the magnitude of the force which will be produced on this sharp edge. So let us consider this force as in the upward direction. So by using the first condition of equilibrium, the sum of all the forces along the y-axis must be equal to zero. Since there is no force acting along the x-axis, so this equation is already satisfied. So the upward force F and that there are three downward forces. So the upward force will be taken as positive while the downward forces will be taken as negative. Minus 10 Newton, minus 6 Newton, and minus 15 Newton will be equal to zero. And from this, the force produced on the sharp edge will be equal to 10 plus 6 plus 15, which equals to 31 Newton. So the force produced on the sharp 
edge will be equal to 31 Newton. And now by using the second condition of equilibrium according to which the sum of all the vector torques acting on the system must be equal to zero or we can say that the clockwise torque must be equal to the anti-clockwise torque. And to write down the equation for the torque we must have to consider the axis of rotation and the choice of the axis of rotation is up to us. So we can select any one point as the axis of rotation from which we can calculate this distance x for this sharp edge. So let us consider this point of the 15 Newton as the axis of rotation so that we can find out this position x. So if we consider the 15 Newton as the axis of rotation, then with respect to this, we will write down the equations for the torque. The torque is the product of the moment arm and into the force. So first of all, for this force F, the rotation will be in the clockwise direction. So the clockwise torque will be equal to the moment arm is X while the force is 31 Newton. So X into 31, this will be equals to the torque due to the anti-clockwise rotation while the force of 6 Newton will produce the torque in the anti-clockwise direction with the moment arm of 0 0.5 meter. So 0 0.5 into 6 plus the torque due to the force of 10 Newton will also will be in the anti-clockwise direction with the moment arm of 1 meter from the axis of rotation. So 1 into 10 will be the anti-clockwise torque. So now if you simplify this equation, we get 31x equal to 3 plus 10, which will be equal to x equals to 13 divided by 31. So 13 divided by 31 will be equal to 0 0.42 meter. So from the left side, this distance will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.42, which is 0 0.58 meter. While if you measure the distance from the right side from the 15 Newton, then this distance will come out to be 0 0.42 meter. Question number eight is, a four meter long uniform ladder with weight of 120 Newton leans against a wall making 70 degree above a cement floor as shown in figure. Assuming the wall is frictionless but the floor is not, determine the forces exerted on the ladder by the floor and by the wall. Dear students, in this question, the uniform ladder is lean against the wall while making an angle of 70 degree. So at the opposite sides of the similar line the angle will be equal so this angle will also equal to 70 degree and we have to find out the resultant force which is exerted on this ladder by the by the floor and by the wall so the very first step is to resolve this force f of g the force due to the ground into its rectangular component so we will resolve this force as f x and f y component and then by using the first condition of equilibrium the sum of all the forces along the x-axis must be equal to zero and along the x-axis the two forces are going to act the one force is f of x in the positive x direction while the f of w is in the negative x direction so f x minus fw will be equal to zero or we can say that fx is equal to fw and then the sum of all the forces acting along the y-axis must be also equal to zero and there are the two forces which act along the y-axis the one is in the positive y direction while the weight of this letter is acting in the negative y direction so 
f of y minus w will be equal to 0 or f of y will be equal to w. So f of y will be equal to the weight of the letter which is 120 newton. So the one component of this force f of g is calculated which comes out to be 120 newton. Now the main point in this question is to find out this force f of x which equals to f of w. And we are doing this so because the f of g will be equal to the square root of f of x square plus f of y square. So f of x is known but f of y we have f of y is known but f of x we have to calculate so now we will use the second condition of equilibrium to find out f of x so according to the second condition of equilibrium the sum of all the torques acting on the system must be equal to zero and for this first of all we have to find first of all we have to consider the axis of rotation so let us consider this point as the axis of rotation so if this point is axis of rotation then according to this we have to write down the equation for which the torque clockwise torque must be equal to the anti-clockwise torque so there are the two forces the weight of this ladder and the reaction force due to the wall due to which this ladder could be rotated or the torques can be produced so first of all, we have to find out this angle of the weight which the ladder is going to make. So if the 70 angle is given, then this is the right angle triangle which, is, which will make 90 degree angle. So 180 minus 90 minus 70 will give rise to the angle of 20 degree. So if you resolve the weight into its rectangular component, then you will get its two component as wx and wy so we have to use this component of this weight which will be equal to if the straight line this is going to make the 90 degree angle so if this angle is 20 degree then the remaining angle will be equal to 70 degree so as a result if you take the position vector which is present inside the ladder so the moment arm will be the distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied so this will be exactly the half of the ladder so it will be equals to 2 meter so the two meter and also this will be the torque produced in the clockwise direction. So the moment arm is two meter multiplied by the weight component, which is W cos of 70 because this is the base with which the 70 degree angle is going to make. So base ke saath jo paas side hoti hai, uske liye hum cos ko use karte hai. So in this case, w cos of 70 degree will be used and this has to be equal to the anti-clockwise torque which is produced due to the force of the wall so in this case again we have to resolve this force into its component so if this angle is 70 degree then the remaining angle will be equal to 20 degree so in this case again this side is along the angle this is the base side so this side ke saath angle ban raha hota hai uske saath hum cos ko use karte hain so by using the cos this will be equal to now in this case the moment arm will be 4 meter since the total length of the ladder so it will be 4 meter into f of w cos of 20 degree so now in this case, instead of 70 degree, we will use cos of 20 degree. So now dear students, let us calculate the values. So this will be equal to 2 meter into the weight of the letter is 120 Newton cos of 70 degree. 
So this will be equals to f of w into 4 cos of 20 degree. So 2 into 120 into cos of 70 degree is equal to 82.08 Newton meter divided by 4 cos of 20 degree which equals to f of w so from this f of w will come out to be 82.08 divided by 4 cos of 20 degree so it equals to 21.84 newton so now dear students we have the value of f of x which is equals to f of w and f of y so now we will calculate the resultant force which is exerted on the ladder due to the floor and the wall so by substituting the values in this equation fx is 21.84 square plus fy is 120 square so f of g will be equal to 21.84 square plus 120 square and the square root of the answer we get 122 newton. So 122 newton will be the resultant force which will be exerted on the ladder due to the floor and due to the wall. Dear students, the last question, question number nine is the 450 kilogram uniform I-beam sports the load of 220 kilogram as shown in the figure. Determine the reactions at the sports, that is RA and RB. So the very first step is to convert the given masses into the weight. So the weight of the beam is equals to 450 kilogram into 9.8 meters per second square so this will be equal to 4410 newton while the weight of the load is equal to 220 kilogram into 9.8 meters per second square so 220 into 9.8 is equal to 2156 newton. Now we have to find out the reaction forces on the sport. So first of all, by using the first condition of equilibrium, the sum of all the forces acting along the x-axis must be equal to zero. And since there is no moment along the x-axis, so the, this equation is satisfied. Now, the second part of the first condition is sum of all the forces acting along the y-axis must be equal to zero. So, the weight of the beam will be exactly at the center of this beam and it is equal to 4410 Newton. And its moment arm will be equal to 4 meters since 5.6 and 2.4 is equal to 8. So, half of the 8 meter is 4 meter. So, to write down the equation of the force, the upward forces are Ra plus Rb. So these forces must be equal to the downward forces, which are 4,410 4, plus 2,156 Newton. So from this, Ra will be equals to 6,566 minus R of B. From this, we get the first equation. Now, by using the second condition of equilibrium, which is the sum of all the torque acting on the body must be equal to zero, we can be able to find out any one of the force Ra or Rb if we consider any one of the force as the axis of rotation. So let us consider Ra as the axis of rotation. So with respect to this, we will write down the equation of the torque for the clockwise and anti-clockwise torque. The clockwise torque will be produced due to the weight of the beam and due to the load which is attached to this sport. And the anti-clockwise torque will be due to the sport RB. 
so the clockwise torque will be equal to 4 meter into the weight which is 4410 newton plus 5.6 moment arm into 2156 newton and this must be equal to rb into 8 meter so while solving this equation the reaction force which is exerted at the position b will come out to be 3714 newton so if we substitute this value in the equation number one then we can find out the reaction force produced on the sport A. So RA will come out to be 6566 minus 7, 3714 and it comes out to be 2852 Newton. So these are the two reactions which are produced at the sports A and sport B. Dear students, now this is your, your homework time and your today's homework is you have to solve the numerical questions of this unit in your files by your own. This is the end of the today's lecture. Thank you so much. I hope all of you have enjoyed the today's lecture. For any kind of queries, you can write your question in the comment section. See you in the next video with a new topic. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.